Hey, what's up, San Diego? It's your San Diego realtor, Emmanuel Rodriguez. And I wanted to start this video off by introducing you to my one and only baby, Bebita. I got her at two months old and I've had her for officially two years. And she has been by far one of the best decisions that I've made in my life. Before her, I had my son, Scrappy, who passed away at almost 16 years of age. And a little bit before he passed away, I knew that that day was gonna come eventually as much as I hated that to happen. So I went and I got Bebita to go and help me with the pain when that day came. Little did I know how quickly and how much I was gonna fall in love with Bebita as my daughter, as my baby. Her pure innocent soul is just something that I need to protect and she gave me a new purpose for life aside from everything else that I do, just having her has been a huge impact in my life and I wanted to share it with you guys. And before I start talking about the real estate market and how much it has changed over the years, I wanted to make sure that I mentioned how different it is owning a female dog than owning a male dog. See, for the longest time, there was something about a male dog that always fascinated me. There was something about a male dog that always grabbed my attention, right? As a male, I always thought a male dog would be my best friend. And for the longest time, that was the case. My best friend, my son. But little did I know what I was missing out, not owning a female dog, not experiencing the love and the affection that a female dog gives you in comparison to the love and affection a male dog gives you. Maybe it's her, and maybe she's just the perfect representation of what a female dog should be like. And maybe they're not all like her, but from what I've learned these past couple of years, is that female dogs are daddy's girls. Just like in real life, same thing. If you guys don't have yourself a female dog and you love dogs and you've always thought maybe I should get one, don't hesitate, just go for it. It'll be the best decision you've ever made. So as realtors, we always talk about active listings. Active listings, active listings, active listings, right? Which obviously means homes that are for sale, that are currently for sale. And unless you're living far away in a cave or you've been living under a rock this whole time, you have a pretty good idea of how low inventory has been these past couple of years or after the pandemic, I should say. So there are levels to this. And to get a good understanding on how much the market has changed here in San Diego, we obviously need to know some of our history, at least some of the important facts. I would like to go all the way back to 2008 which I'm sure many of you still remember. In 2008, there was an average of 2,700 listings per the whole year. From 2,700 to 2,800 to 2,600. It ended in the month of December at 2,600 homes, active listings, right? The following year, which was 2009, there was an increase in active listings. So 2008, ended around 2,600 homes, an average of 2,600 homes that were active listings. And in the beginning, the first month of 2009, there were 3,300 homes active listings. So it went up about 500 homes in a month. There's no need for me to go through every single month, but I will go through the months that there was a significant change, right? Two months later, so in the month of March of 2009, there was an average of 4,200 listings in the month of March, but by December 2009, it had dropped back down to 2,700 homes for sale. 2010 came knocking with an average total of 2,700 homes in the first month of January of 2010. By December 2010, there was an average of 2,800 homes per that month, and you can say pretty much per that whole year. Give me kisses, Bibita. 2011 started off with an average of 2,800 listings in the very beginning. And by the end of the year, there was still an average of 2,700 homes, 2,700 active listings by the end of the year, which obviously wasn't much of a difference. And I'm sure by now you're able to recognize a certain pattern that homes at the time were around 2,700 active listings since the year of 2008 to 2011 with the exception of 2009 where there were more active listings at that time and for many people 2011 was a bad year a year where they lost their home they were victims to 
many individual lenders setting them up for failure, right? Based on an arm, based on an adjustable rate mortgage where the interest rate would jump from one year to the very next and we're talking about thousands of dollars of a difference when a lot of home buyers expected that not to happen and if it did happen it would be a very small change as far as their monthly payments not going from two thousand a month to now paying four thousand dollars a month or even forty five hundred dollars a month so obviously it was a deal breaker for many people many home buyers lost their home it was horrible times to this day there has been people that haven't recovered from 2011 even though i would like to think that most people have but for other people not the people that were following the crowd not to go and throw shade at anybody but the people that were free thinkers that were not following the crowd those are the people that were able to take advantage of the short sales of all the foreclosure homes and of all the different opportunities that came from that so saying that let's get back to business you want to go bebita go ahead chiquita 2012 followed the same pattern as the previous years with an average of 2700 homes active listings and it stayed like that the rest of the year now this is where it gets exciting when 2013 came along you will see the shift i'm getting excited just talking about it so 2013 came along and it started off with an average of 5300 homes per the month of january in the year of 2013. The month of March, there was an average of 7,700 homes for sale. April, 8,600 active listings. June, there was an average of 10,400 active listings in the year of 2013. July, there was an average of 11,200 active listings in the month of July. In August, it went to 11,900. September was 12,100. In November, it dropped a little bit to 11,800. And the year finished off with an average of 10,300 active listings. And the reason why I skipped over the month of October is because there really wasn't a significant change from September to October. There was an average of 12,100 homes in September and it changed to 12,200 homes in October. 2014 was an exciting year. Why? Because there were more active listings with almost 14,200 homes listed in the month of August. And the rest of the year finished with an average of 11,200 homes, which was still a whole lot of listings that year. To make a long story short, from 2014, all the way to 2018. There was at least an average of 12,000 active listings. 2019 started off really good with an average of 10,500 homes, but by the end of the year, there was an average of 6,900 homes in the year of 2019. 2020 came along knocking on the door with an average of 7,000 homes that first month of 2020. Obviously, we had no idea what awaited us and what was to happen a couple months later. And by the end of 2020, there was a huge drop from 7,000 active listings to 4,400 active listings, which was the biggest change we had seen in the past couple of years. And by the time the end of 2020 came along, there was an average of 4,400 homes for sale, which obviously was a huge drop from the very beginning of the year towards the very end of 2020 7,000 to 4,400 the beginning of 2021 was very similar towards the ending of 2020 but by July there was an average of 5,400 homes for sale which definitely was a small but significant increase in January of 2022 there was an average of 3,100 homes but by July that number had increased to 6,000 400 homes for sale, which many thought was the beginning of a new start. Boy, were they wrong. By January 2023, there was a huge drop to 3,700 active listings, which obviously was a significant drop from July 2022 to January 2023. And we ended this beautiful year with an average of 2,300 homes for sale. So now that you're able to see the whole history, 
and the way the pattern has changed over the years. We are back where we were at, but with homes being at a new standard where we have to adapt to these new times. Hopefully you have a better understanding of where we sit in the market by knowing the history and the present, and that will help us determine the future.